I got an idea. It's not a good idea, but it's an idea. I want to talk about the arteries to the shoulder region. I've got a skeleton, I've got a load of pipe cleaners. Let's see if we can build it, because none of the models show it. I'm wearing lots of layers because the lab is freezing, the heating's not on. There are some wonderful arteries running around the scapula and forming beautiful anastomoses. Um, and I can't find a good way of demonstrating them without using CG. Um, what we're gonna have to do first is build the major blood vessel, the subclavian artery, becoming the axillary artery, becoming the brachial artery, and then we will form the arteries from it. Not all of the branches, but the branches supplying the shoulder region. Think the muscles of the shoulder region, this around here, okay? So there's gonna be a bit of detail um, but it's going to be a visual thing. Right, I've got about these three. If I, so if I use yellow, orange and green, so the, tr the trick here is, is the subclavian artery. On the left and the right, it has slightly different origins, but the subclavian artery, as it passes the first rib, changes its name and becomes the axillary artery as it runs through the axilla, the armpit. And then when it leaves the axilla, it's so when it passes teres major, one of the borders of the axilla, it changes its name again and becomes the brachial artery, the artery of the brachium, that is, of the arm. So if I do the different colours and double these over, that might make um, some sense and show you where these branches are coming from a bit more clearly. So if I wrap that round there, I'm going to do orange bit. You know what, that's not half bad. And you get the idea. So this is all one artery, it just changes its name. So the subclavian artery comes out through the superior thoracic aperture, out of the thoracic cage, so it's out of the thoracic cage. And as it passes the lateral border of the first rib, here we have the axillary artery, we're just changing its name, remember, running through the axilla, and then as it leaves the axilla, becomes the brachial artery in green. Pretty. Okay, now should we, let's do the easy, add the easy arteries first, shall we? The superior thoracic artery would be a good easy one. Well, now bear in mind, we've got a lot of arteries to get through and I've only got so many colours. The superior thoracic artery is a branch of the axillary artery and it runs to uh, the first couple of intercostal spaces. Okay, this is looking less good already. It runs to the first couple of intercostal spaces. It's going to innovate the muscle. Sorry, it's going to supply blood to the muscles around here. It's going to actually anastomose with the intercostal arteries. It's going to supply blood to the subclavius muscle that's under there, and that's about it. The other major artery of note here, which isn't one of the arteries of the shoulder, it's the internal thoracic artery, which is going to be inside the thorax, the internal mammary artery or the internal thoracic artery. And that's going to be running down here. So this artery will also anastomose with that. But this is the superior thoracic artery. Kind of around here somewhere. This isn't going to be entirely anatomically accurate, but hopefully it's going to get these visual ideas across. Next, the next logical branch will be the thoracoacromial artery. Thoracoacromial, thoracoacromial, thorax, and the acromion. Now, where's the acromion? Highest point of the shoulder here. So, it actually starts off as a trunk, and then it gives off some branches. It gives off, uh, so it's going to be nearby that one. Oh, can I do it out of one purple one, maybe? Maybe. Um, it's also going to send a branch down the outside of the thorax, like the superior thoracic artery, so kind of down there, and then it's going to send off a branch over here. Oh yeah, hello. <laughs> so the thoracoacromial artery, this would be the acromial branch, and this would be um, a pectoral branch that will run between pectoralis major and minor. So down here we're going to find um, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, serratus anterior, this um, acromial branch will also give off deltoid branches to supply blood to the deltoid muscle. Now it also can give off a clavicular branch 
that would run from there back towards the sternoclavicular joint over there. Actually, let's go nuts. I've done it. I've cut this pipe cleaner in half. <laughs> we can now add uh, a deltoid branch. It's still a bit chunky, isn't it? Clavicular branch. I just know that the more complexity I add, the dafter this is going to become. You can see that the thoracoacromial artery is also a branch from the axillary artery. It has a pectoral branch, a clavicular branch, a deltoid branch, which is largely a branch from the acromial branch. Oh yeah. Please bear in mind that not only is everybody's anatomy a little bit variable, but <laughs> there is a fair bit of artistic license going on here. Okay, next branch. The next branch really would be the lateral thoracic branch. Let's use white to get that out of the way. The lateral thoracic artery is um, just what it says. It's a, that's probably a bit long there, um, but it's a lateral thoracic artery. So it's gonna supply blood to the serratus anterior muscle that's down here to the lateral breast and what have you. And it's gonna run kind of, that should be a bit higher. It's gonna run down with pectoralis minor to get to the lateral thorax. Superior thoracic artery, pectoral branch of the thoracoacromial artery, lateral thoracic artery, boom, lots of blood to the anterior wall. Of course, we're talking about the shoulder and in the shoulder region here, we've got the pectoralis major muscle and pectoralis minor. You know, they're significant muscles. And then serratus anterior, which is holding the scapula against the thoracic wall, another big muscle. Big muscles need um, big blood supply. Um, okay, right, so those are pretty cool. Now, now I need to talk about the thyrocervical trunk. Thyrocervical trunk. That sounds like I need to go back towards the neck. So the thyrocervical trunk, the reason I need to talk about it is because we're gonna see some arteries run posteriorly back to the scapula around here. That's what we're gonna work to next. And the thyrocervical trunk is, um, well, cervical, cervical, neck. It's a thyro, thyroid. This is a trunk from the subclavian artery that's gonna supply blood to the structures of the neck. But it also gives some branches which are gonna be of interest to us if we're thinking about the arteries of the shoulder region. Okay, so the thyrocervical trunk then, um, oh, this is getting worse. I need to make something over here coming from the subclavian artery. I tell you what, we'll do the thyrocervical trunk and the suprascapular artery in black. Um, I might explain why as we go. Okay, so I've got to go around to the, the yellow subclavian artery. Okay, so imagine this is the thyrocervical trunk and it's going to give off the super, sup, supra scapular artery. So now we're talking about the scapula. And the scapula has got this spinous process here. So supra would be up here, infra would be down here. And the suprascapular artery, so it comes off the subclavian artery and it's gonna run laterally and posteriorly to the scapula and it's gonna to run to the suprascapular fossa and supply blood to the structures in here but it's also gonna loop around the scapula and it's gonna to get to the infrascapular fossil, supply blood to the structures down here, and anastomose with some other arteries that we're going to add. So that's the suprascapular artery. Now, the other artery around here is the dorsal scapular artery, and the dorsal scapular artery is also described sometimes as a branch of the thyrocervical trunk. I think the literature says that it comes from the thyrocervical trunk in about 30% of people, but most of the time, say 70% or so, the dorsal scapular artery is also a direct branch from the subclavian artery. So where does that go? Is this gonna be long enough? Dorsal scapular artery. So we're gonna make this a separate branch from the subclavian artery. It's also gonna run posteriorly so superiorly and posteriorly to the scapula, 
but it's going to run around here. Oh, can I trap it under there? So it's going to run around the scapula with the medial margin. So dorsal scapular artery here. So here we've got uh, the levator scapulae muscle. It's going to go deep to that, supply blood to it. And we've got the rhomboids here. Again, this is, this is for convenience, me tucking it in there rather than anatomical accuracy, right? Okay, now we have got more arteries of the scapula, but we need to come back around to the axillary artery. There is a subscapular artery, which makes sense, I guess. And it, we can do this in pink. The subscapular artery comes from the axillary artery, but it's going to give off two branches pretty much straight away. Um, so the subscapular artery, we'll just wind this together. So it looks like one artery. Well, I could make two branches from it, could I? And it runs posteriorly in the axilla, to the posterior axilla. It's trying to get to the scapula. And one of its branches is the circumflex scapular artery. And that circumflex scapular artery is going to run to the scapula and is going to anastomose with that suprascapular, not the orange one, with the suprascapular artery that came around here. So this is an anastomosis between the circumflex scapular artery, which is a branch of the subscapular artery, that blood vessel anastomoses with this suprascapular artery in black coming around here. Now, if you're struggling with the idea of anastomosis, so we've got these loops and you're trying to think, well, which way does the blood go? What we can't see here is we can't see all the other arteries, all the small blood vessels coming off these arteries and going into the muscles. So the truth is that the blood is flowing around in both directions and it's flowing out of these arteries into the muscles, across the capillary beds and into the venous side of the circuitry system. So it's not flowing that away or that away. It's flowing in and like that, right? Circumflex scapular artery. Now this one here is the thoracodorsal artery and it's going to run to the inferior angle of the scapula and, oh, look at that, uh, more luck than judgment, it's going to anastomose with uh, the dorsal scapular artery. And that, that's pretty much it. I think that's what I was trying to do. I think that's a really cool thing. Look, we've got these, these loops of arteries around the scapula supplying blood to the muscles here. And we, okay, does it, I'm not sure if it looks like a mess or if it's a good thing. Um, the most important thing is I had fun doing it. Building up the arteries in this way is really helpful in remembering because you have to, you have to synthesize the information and create it. And it might not be super anatomically accurate, but you get the gist. So what have I made here? Well, we've made in yellow, the subclavian artery becomes the axillary artery in reddish orange, becomes the brachial artery in green. And we can see from the subclavian artery, we have this dorsal, sorry, no, we have this suprascapular artery because it's running out that away to the suprascapular fossa around to the infrascapular fossa and anastomosing with this fella down here. And then in orange, we have the dorsal scapular artery because it's running around to the medial scapula and anastomosing with this fella here. Those are both then from the subclavian artery, um, although the uh, suprascapular artery is typically from the thyrocervical trunk. And then we've got the superior thoracic artery from the axillary artery supplying the upper part of the thorax here. We have the thoracoacromial artery with its pectoral branch and its acromial branch up here, deltoid branch, clavicular branch and so on. Then we have the lateral thoracic artery also from the axillary artery supplying blood to the lateral thoracic wall. And then we see this other, this other branch here, the subscapular artery giving off the circumflex scapular artery with an anastomosis, anastomosing here, and the thoracodorsal artery running around the thoracic wall to the scapula and anastomosing here. <coughs> I've been talking a lot today. 
That is a lot of anatomy. But isn't the blood supply to the shoulder region just pretty cool? It's fantastic. It's, it's, I don't know. I really like this sort of thing. I think it's really, really neat. Anyway, um, if that was useful, good. It's quite difficult. It's quite interesting. Um, and of course, what I haven't shown is all the muscles here. This is the blood, these are the blood vessels. You need to kind of um, relate this, add this onto your three-dimensional understanding of where the muscles are, where the veins are, where the other structures around here are. But, um, you know, we have to put things in isolation, build up these building blocks, and then we get an idea of the full picture, don't we? Cool, okay. Right, um, see you guys next week, I think.